welcome to Studio 8. I'm Tracy Haynes. Today we're going to talk about getting started in pastel. During the course of this video there's going to be a lot of information. Rather than have you uh, try to write this down and start and stop the video, I will list all of this on my blog, tracyhaynesart.blogspot.com. Okay, so you're brand new to the medium of pastel. You want to get started in it. What do you need to get started? That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, there are several kinds of paper on the market uh, that lend itself to pastel painting. Pastel is pure pigment held together with a binder like gum tragacanth, uh, as opposed to chalk. Some people mistakenly call this chalk. Chalk is sandstone impregnated with dye, so it's not archival or long-lasting, whereas pastel is every bit as long-lasting as any other media, such as oil painting, acrylic paints, etc. Uh, so, papers. There are several on the market. Um, some cost less than others, and you can even make your own, and we'll get into that too. Canson Mitientes is a nice paper. I like it a lot. Um, I happen to like to paint on the wrong side, and uh, we'll demonstrate why that is in a minute with, with some pastel and the paper. Uh, one of the drawbacks to Canson is that it can't get wet, and in my particular technique, I, I like to turp out and oil painting with, I mean a uh, pastel painting with uh, either turpenoid or you can also use alcohol or water, but that's a drawback with the Canson paper. Um, also when you go to frame it, you need a backing board. So uh, those are just a few of the drawbacks. Here's an example of painting on the wrong side of the Canson paper versus the right side of the paper that shows a lot of tooth. I happen to like the smoother look of the so-called wrong side. Other papers on the market include sanded papers like Art Spectrum by Dakota. This is one example of that. Uh, Wallace paper, I'm not sure if that's still being made. UART is another uh, relatively new paper that comes in different grades of the pumice, which is the sand that gives the tooth on the papers. I also like Pastel Board uh, by Ampersand, and what I like about this is that it's got the sanded surface on a board, so it makes framing just a little bit easier, cuts out one step in the process. Um, none of these are particularly inexpensive. To save money, sometimes I make my own pastel surfaces, and there are several ways to do this. You can find uh, pumice, actually, in hardware stores and mix it with some gesso until it's like pancake batter, and you can use a foam roller, to roll it on a wooden surface, you can take a brush and brush it on, or you can use a foam brush. All give slightly different effects, and you play around and see what kind of surface you like. Now let's get into pastels. There are several pastels on the market, and uh, there are hard pastels and soft pastels. Generally, you want to use the harder pastels for the underpainting. And then as the surface builds up with pastel and accepts less of the pastel medium, you want a softer and softer pastel. So I would recommend going out and getting some hard pastels. I bought a box of 96. These are called new pastels. They come in a large variety of colors and values. In addition to the hard pastels, I'd also recommend you pick up either a small box of soft pastels or you can buy individual sticks. And uh, a few of the brands, just to mention a few, Rembrandt, Unison, Schmeeke, Sennelier, uh, Diane Townsend, and some of my favorites are Terry Ludwig pastels. And I know Terry, he lives in Littleton and a uh, wonderful guy but he makes great pastels because they're square. Most of the others are round, and I love to use the edge to get a nice, sharp line. So we've covered pastel papers and pastels. A few other things you might want to pick up include a barrier cream to protect your skin. I like this Art Guard barrier cream. There's also gloves in a bottle. Uh, pick up some uh, odorless mineral spirits, terpenoid, or I also like the, the Gamsol odorless mineral spirits. And it's very helpful to have the Krylon workable fixative because when you run out of tooth, especially if you're using a non-sanded surface like the Canson paper, uh, you sometimes run out of tooth, you want to add more layers of pastel. So if you take your painting outside and spray it, with uh, workable fixative, it brings back the tooth. 
So I recommend if you don't already have these that you go out and purchase some supplies. Again, I've put the ones that we've talked about on my blog, tracyhainesart.blogspot.com. In addition, um, I would recommend that you look over several videos. There are plenty on the internet how to start pastels. You want to find a style that you like and would like to emulate. Um, if it's mine, wonderful. One way to find out is to take a look at my work at tracyhaines.com. That's my website. You can go to my Facebook page, Tracy Haynes Fine Art. Again, my blog spot has uh, paintings. And uh, if you like what you see, then follow along. The next video will be a how to begin a pastel. We'll take you through the process of laying out the drawing, doing the underpainting, and turping it out. And, uh, and we'll follow that to completion. Thank you for tuning in.